Hey, um, you know, ever, ever since the, the pandemic started, um, you know, I became a citizenship nerd, okay? And, <laughs> you know, just learning about different uh, citizenships and, you know, from different countries and, you know, how, you know, how, how you can get them, how you can lose them, uh, you know, the different ways to acquire them, the, the, the timing and all that, can you do it through marriage, through birth, you know, through just living in the country, uh, you know, for service to that country, whatever, right? It was just some nerdy thing I, I, I spent some time doing, especially during, like, more of the height of the pandemic. Uh, and, um, and it's something that just still interests me, and, you know, and, and then, it was about a week ago, I thought, you know, I tried to look more into the history of, uh, you know, citizenship, and how it was different, you know, different countries, uh, from, you know, long ago, and things like that. And then I started thinking about Roman citizenship. And I did some research on that because, you know, I, I remember, you know, re reading in the book of Acts that Paul would sometimes basically invoke his Roman citizenship for certain rights and protections. Okay. And then something really interesting, right? And, and this has to do with... Uh, God's planning and his foreknowledge, right? Because, of course, God knew that there was going to be a Roman Empire, okay? And he also knew, you know, the, the time Jesus was going to have uh, his earthly ministry, you know, during a certain particular time of the Roman Empire, and also Paul, right? His missionary journeys during a particular time of the Roman Empire. And, you know, having, you know, originally, like, Roman citizenship, uh, it, it was harder to obtain. You know, R Rome would uh, conquer other lands and not give them citizenship, okay? And still tax them and, you know, expect them basically to be subservient to Rome, and, uh, you know, also, you know, if you were born a slave, like, you weren't considered a Roman citizen. You didn't have certain rights and privileges. I guess as a slave, you pretty much had no rights. Um, right, because you were, you were a slave. And, uh, you know, but something really important, and let me speak of, of Jesus first, right? Um. Jesus was not a Roman, okay? He did not have Roman citizenship. And that's really something important to understand um, because though some Jews, like the Apostle Paul, did have Roman citizenship, um, you know, G Jesus not having it is very, very important, okay? Um, because if Jesus was a Roman he would not have been crucified, okay? That was one of the, the rights of a Roman citizen was, you know, not to be crucified or have, you know, a form of painful execution and also not to be tortured, okay? Um, in fact, uh, you know, I, I read this quote by uh, Cicero who was... Uh, I mean, he was like a poet. I, I can't remember if he was also a senator in, you know, in the Roman Empire later. But, uh, you know, but he, he wrote about crucifixion and he said that, like, basically that the cross was considered an abomination to the Romans because it was uh, basically, like, in, in the, the mind of a Roman citizen, it was, like, basically just for subhuman people, uh, you know, being crucified. So... You know, like, uh, I found that kind of interesting, too. You know, that the Romans, like, they thought the cross was a, an abomination. But, uh, 
anyways, um, you know, another, you know, the, the, there's other rights and privileges as a Roman citizen. One, you, know, you can't be tortured, you can't be crucified if you're a Roman citizen. Um, you know, you, you could, if you weren't a Roman citizen, you couldn't have a legal marriage on the, in, in the empire. Uh, you couldn't, like, legally own property. You couldn't just move around. Uh, you know, your movement was, like, restricted. Uh, you didn't have a right to a trial. And you couldn't appeal to Caesar and, and have your trial and be tried in Rome. You know, if you're a Roman, whatever, wherever you were in the empire, if you're accused of a crime, you had the right to appeal to Caesar. And that, that meant that you would be tried uh, in the city of Rome. Okay. And you would have what they considered to be a fair trial. Now, um, you know, Jesus was not a Roman, so, you know, he didn't have a f fair trial, you know, he, he didn't, you know, he wasn't sent to Rome to appeal to Caesar, uh, and, you know, he was tortured and he was crucified, okay, and, you know, if, if Jesus was born into a family that was more prominent of, in the time of his birth. Uh, you know, like, if, you know, if he wasn't born in a manger to a family that had, like, low social status, and instead, if he was born into, like, basically, a, like, a pharisaical family, like, he might have had Roman citizenship. Um, and then he wouldn't have been crucified. So it's interesting how God set that up as well. Uh, you know, to make sure he didn't have Roman citizenship. Um, and, you know, also I, I, I found out that, uh, you know, a, as the empire progressed, you know, there were certain ways for you to gain Roman citizenship if you weren't, uh, you know, freeborn Roman. And to them, you know, a freeborn Roman citizen was, you know, if your father was a Roman citizen you would be a Roman citizen, you know, right when you were born. Um, but, uh, then they had other, you know, ways for people to try to acquire citizenship, like, uh, for example, if you were a slave and your master freed you, you became a Roman citizen automatically. Um, you know, people could, uh, you know, like, purchase uh, Roman, or excuse me, so the slaves, like, if their master would allow it, they could, like, purchase their freedom, and then that would also make them a Roman citizen. Uh, the, the government had this thing also that, like, uh, you know, if you served in a Roman auxiliary army for 25 years, uh, you know, the, then you would become a Roman citizen that's a long time, 25 years in the army. Uh, and sometimes they would also give it to like, uh, like basically to, to foreigners that, that help, that would help the Roman army basically like establish a colony, like a new colony. And, uh, you know, during the time of Paul, like, you know, he was from Damascus, and that, that area was colonized by Rome, and, uh, the gate, you know, before, I don't know if it was Paul's grandfather or his father or what, but, like, you know, a little bit earlier in, in, from Paul's time, uh, you know, the, the Romans granted... Uh, citizenship to uh, s some of the more high society people in that area also as a bid to like uh, basically get them loyal to Rome and, and basically to like sell out their uh, you know their own people and stuff but anyways uh, 
somehow you know, Paul's you know grandfather or his father or something got Roman citizenship, and if it was his grandfather, then it passed it down to Paul's father, and then Paul you know was that's why he was a freeborn Roman citizen, okay, because somehow his father had Roman citizenship. Now, also you know. Why, why is it important that Paul had it, right? It's important that Jesus didn't have it, but why is it important that Paul had it? Um, because, you know, and some, some people like certain Ruckmanite types, they like to really hammer in that Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles, and they go to like this extreme and say that, you know, Peter and everybody else, that's just for the Jews, and you don't even have to read those books, and you know they get all hyper dispensational like that, and, and they try to teach that, you know, you know some people even go on extra extreme and try to preach they pre try to claim they preach different gospels and stuff. It's ridiculous, but uh, but look, Peter, and uh, I think as far as we know, like the other apostles, like they didn't have Roman citizenship. Like Paul was the only apostle, I think that we know of that had Roman citizenship. So that literally made it easier for him to move around the empire. Okay. Um, without being persecuted by the government. Uh, because, you know, it, you, you, like, you know, nowadays, because, uh, you know, our, our little free grace group here, you know, where does mostly everybody live? It's either the United States, Canada, uh, Australia, or somewhere in Europe, right? And I'm here in Brazil. And, you know, Canada's a big country. The U.S. is a big country. Uh, Brazil's a big country. Australia's a big country. And the EU, you know, like there's the European Union. And if you're in the Union, if you're, one of those, what, 27, 28 countries, you have access to, like, most of the European continent where you could just go live and work, like, just because you want to, right? And, and you have that freedom. And in the, you know, in the big countries like Brazil or United States or Canada, Australia, you know, we, we take for granted our freedom of movement, like, within, within, you know, the countries that we live in. Right? Um... Also because our countries are so big. But, you know, back in, in Paul's day, you know, it, only certain people could just move around the Roman Empire. Okay. So I do think also God uh, purposely chose somebody who was a Roman to go spread the gospel uh, within the empire. Okay. Uh, so I, you know, so I, I think there was definitely some practicality to it as well because P, again, P, Peter just he was not a Roman. He couldn't just go around, you know, to different Roman provinces, uh, and, and be allowed through through the gates of the cities and stuff. You know, because you had to show I think some sort of paperwork or identification or whatever proving that you're a Roman for you to move around. And there was like checkpoints and stuff. Um. But uh, so, anyways, so also Paul, you know, we read the book of Acts. He he uses the fact that he has Roman citizenship. Like he he reveals it sometimes for for certain things to happen, right? Like, uh, you know, he 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 appealed to Caesar. He had he had that right as a Roman citizen to appeal to Caesar, and he was able to bring the gospel literally all the way to the city of Rome. Okay. Um. You know, God used that. Uh, you know, Paul, when it, when him and and Silas were, were were beat up and thrown in jail, and then uh, I forgot if it was like Acts sixteen or like seventeen. You know, when they're let out, uh, Paul said something like, you know. Well, let them come in here and get us so they know that they beat up some Romans, right? They, you know, because you can't, like, you would get in trouble if you were, if you beat up a Roman, you know, because they had special rights and privileges. Um, and so, you know, 
and then, you know, Paul would get his trials and stuff, and, uh, so, you know, he used that to his advantage, uh, but God, you know, uh, set that up to where he would have Rome, like, you know, <laughs> Roman citizenship, so that, that's pretty cool, um, And uh, another interesting thing, you know, uh, you know, when, when Jesus communicated with people and also just, you know, other, uh, you know, people, preachers in the Bible, uh, when they would communicate with people, they, they would like use... Uh, you know, either, either stories or something that people could relate to that, the, you know, that they already had some familiarity with. And I think it's pretty cool that, like, you know, when it talks about our citizenships in heaven and how, uh, you know, as... Uh, and how, like, you know, Jesus came to set the captives free, you know, like in, in Ephesians, and how we're not, we're not bondmen, okay? And, you know, when we get saved, we receive uh, a lot of, th you know, we receive eternal life, we receive imputed righteousness, we're adopted into God's family, right? Uh, our, our sins are separated from us as far as, you know, as the east is from the west, as far as you know, as as God is concerned, right? He he's never going to mention our sins. Um, one of the things too is that we uh, we get to heavenly citizenship, and you know, interestingly, you know, like if if a Roman slave was freed, he would get Roman citizenship. Uh, you know. When somebody believes the gospel, they go from basically, you know, being in bondage and, and being, you know, like a slave to a hard taskmaster, you know, and they go from, you know, having God's grace and, you know, being, having liberty in Christ and being free from, you know, like legalism and stuff like that and they have a heavenly citizenship so I think that's really cool too uh, and also you know the, the book of Philemon is so interesting yeah it's really short but it's really interesting because uh, you know you have uh, Philemon who it, it seems like you know he used to be Onesimus's. uh like his slave, right? Uh, and, you know, he offended Onesimus in some way and also sounds like he ran away. But Paul has Philemon go back to Onesimus and deliver a letter to Onesimus basically saying, hey, Philemon believes in Jesus Christ too. Accept him as a brother now. You know, treat him as an equal. Uh, you're both free in Christ. And, you know, Paul says, you know, if you have something against Philemon, put it on my account. And that's kind of a, a picture of how, you know, uh, our sins were put on Jesus's, you know, were imputed onto the, the you know, J Jesus's body when he was on the cross so that, you know, we would have uh, his righteousness imputed onto our account. So that's really cool, too. And, uh, you know, and just culturally, too, I, I would think to be a Roman and, and own slaves and, and be told that, like, hey, you know, you know, God, didn't God free you, you know, on, on Onesimus? You know, uh, well, the, the same God that freed you, you know, saved Philemon's soul, and now I want you to accept him as, not not, not as a, a, like a you know a servant slave accept him as a brother okay <laughs> uh, 
you know, he's family now. I mean, that, that, that's really cool, too. Uh, so, anyways, I hope this was uh, a blessing to somebody. Uh, God bless.